Hello my friends, how are you doing? Today I'm going to show you how to use the pen tool in Affinity Photo and you might think this is just good for vectors or illustrations but that's not true because you can do amazing things for example for cool line effects for glowing eyes and these kind of mystical effects that you want to have and also these kind of gradients and glows shapes and curves can be amazing tools so let me show you how to use them my name is Olivio I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all my patrons who support me and make these videos possible thank you very much for that and let's get started so you will find the pen tool over here on the left side where all of your tools are down here pen tool and you can see it has a little white corner that means there is another tool hidden beneath it so click and hold it with the mouse and you will see this little pop-up menu uh, pops up basically which gives you the pen tool and the note tool and the note tool is basically how you manipulate how you change the curve after you have drawn it good so when we select the pen tool up here you can see there are several options to choose from the most important right now for us is that a curve can have a fill and the fill means when you create a curve it also creates a two-dimensional shape and this can have a fill color this is also true if the curve is still open we will look at that in a second then you also have the color of the stroke and next to it you basically can style the stroke in various ways for us important right now is just the width of it so how thick is our stroke good so now the very basics of our pen tool are that basically every time you click you create a point and as you can see when i just click this will create a straight line between these points good now when you click and drag your mouse you get these two points and two blue lines those are called handles and the handles they basically work like magnets who are influencing the path of the curve and you can see now if I make a second point and draw out my handles that the one on the left side influences like a magnet the curve that is coming into my point while the one on the right side is influencing the curve that is coming out of the point which also means that it influences the curve that I haven't even drawn yet so you can see here if I pull this up here and then I just click for my next point without dragging out any handles it still bends up the curve because this handle is pointing up here so it drags all of the curve upwards towards that point now the good thing is while you are drawing your curve you can still influence how it is shaped how it looks so let's make another point you can see again I have my two handles now what I can do is before I create the next point I press and hold control on my keyboard and you can see this automatically turns my mouse into the node tool and with the node tool I can grab these handles and move them around to adjust them before I even draw the next point and there is another special thing you can do here and that is you can also press the alt key and this will unlink the two handles so you can move them around individually as you can see here I can move this one and I can move the other one and I even can move them into different directions or this time I can move them towards the same side of my point here so what do you think will happen with uh, when I make my next click or when I make my click down here you can see that now the incoming line comes from the left side into the point but the outcoming line also leaves to the left side which creates a sharp point here or a sharp corner basically so this can be extremely useful another thing to point out here is that when you hold your shift key this limits the movement of your mouse by 45 degrees as you can see here you get this little yellow line and so the next line that I create will be in one of these 45 degree iterations you can see I can click here and then I can go up here and over here so you can do things like this 
where this exactly always has these kind of degrees. So this can be very helpful for a lot of different reasons. Okay, so this is basically how you use the pen tool. It is very basic, it's very easy, it's a little bit hard to master, but when you play around with it a little bit, you will see that you can use it very efficiently to create really beautiful shapes and curves and selections and gradients and all these kind of amazing things. Now let's point out some more things that are important about our pen tool, especially when we want to look up here where we have all these kind of confusing settings and to see what they are. The most important for us are these actions over here and then a little bit of that snapping over here. So you can see here, I create a curve, just any curve. And now the important thing here is if you want to create another curve, what you do is you press the control key so it turns into the node tool and then you click somewhere on the background like that. You can see now my curve points aren't visible anymore. And so now when I let go of my control key, I can now start a second curve like that. So that's very useful. Good, so you can see also over here, every curve has its own layer. And that means I have now two curves. So if you want to combine these two curves, you would select these two layers. And then up here, you can see you have break curve, you have close curve, you have smooth curve, you have joint curves, and you have reverse curve. Reverse curve is for the direction that the curve is going into. That is a more advanced thing we don't need now. If you want to connect these two curves, this is the important thing. Now, if you just close the curve, what will happen is that you still have two curves, but now both of these curves are closed. So this is not how that works. What you have to do instead is select both curves and then click on to join curves. So this will join both of them. And then you click on close curve and this will also close the point over here. And now, as you can also see with our layers, we only have one curve left. And like I said, you can still use your note tool to move around the points and bend it into the shape that you actually want to have. Now let's go over to the note tool, which we have basically already understood and how to use that because your note tool is a tool where when you click onto the path, onto the curve, you can just bend it in any way you want over here, down there, you will see this is like a rubber band following your mouse. So that's very useful. You can also select these points here and then you see the handles of the point, but also of the point before and after that. And you can move these around. If they are still connected, they will both move. If you want to disconnect them, hold the Alt key and then move one of them so they move individually. That's very easy. Another thing that's important here for the note tool is that you can click anywhere on the curve and this will create an additional point that you can also, of course, move around. And you can do the opposite thing. So I can, for example, select this point and then simply press delete on my keyboard and this will remove the point. Of course, this will also change the path of the curve because now neither the point nor its two handles are there to influence my curve. So that is important to understand. Okay, so now let's think about what can we actually do with a curve? Well, of course, the first thing you can do is to create shapes like this one. This one isn't like anything special, but you can, for example, save this as an asset. So whatever you want to draw funny characters or hearts or any kind of thing you can draw here and then you can simply move them over into your assets and save them as shapes. So you can create your own genuine shapes and with fill for example as we have said before you can give this a fill color like that. So this is all pretty easy. Okay, so now I said this is not just about shapes, not just about assets, stuff like that. You can use this for photo editing, but how? Here we have a picture with sunglasses. If we want to select them, we can, of course, use our freehand selection tool, but we would either be very precise with our movement of the mouse, or we would have to zoom in here and then hold our shift key and create these little straight lines, both of which are not great options for that. So instead, 
what we can do here is use the node tool for that. You can see here I set my fill to nothing. My stroke I will set to pink so you can see what I'm doing, making it a little bit thicker. Um, you don't have to do that if you make a selection. This is just for me so you can see how I'm creating these points around the sunglasses. So let's create a point here. And uh, you can see I, I pull out the start of this point so to give it a little bit of a curve here. And then let's go and move this over here. So you can see this follows the sunglasses. I will move this down here. And let's create another point up here. We have to bend this over like that. Okay, that looks pretty good. And maybe we only need one more. That is actually pretty good. Okay, so I've created this. Maybe change this to a bright uh, green so you can see my line a little bit better. So you can see now I have created this line around the sunglasses. I can still use my note tool if I feel like, well, I want to adjust some things here. For example, this can be a little bit more in here, like that maybe. Over here, this could be a bit more over. Let's pull this out a little bit maybe like that. So you can see that you can make really precise selections and you can still adjust them afterwards. Let's give this a fill color now. Let's give this a pink fill color, for example. And now if I hold my control key and click on the curves layer, you can see that this selects everything. I can now hide that and I can, for example, copy this part of my picture. So control C, control V, and I've created a copy just of this left sunglasses. As you can see, that was pretty easy, it was pretty fast. So this is how you can use your curves to create a selection. You can also do other effects with your photos. For example, I can use this curve now and blend it with soft light over my sunglasses. So now the left sunglass has this pink hue. What you can also do to create these shapes as glow effects in your pictures. So I create a shape here. Let's pull this out on this side, pull this out on the other side. And then I simply connect these two shapes. And now I use Control and Alt to adjust these points so they exactly fit the cat eye. This is the upper part done. This is the lower part done, basically. All right, there we go. So the next thing is I just fill it with white, for example, as a color. Let's pull this up here because it's behind my cat picture. And now the only thing I need to do, let's uh, zoom out. You can see this nicely fills the cat eye. I go in here, I go to effects and then I put a little bit of blur on it so it gets a little bit softer on the outside and then I create an outer glow. For example, let's use a nice violet, make it a big radius, let's say 150 pixels in this case. We can still adjust the color so it looks more glowy, looks more nice. So like this, for example. I can intensify the effect by simply duplicating that. And now you have a nice glowy cat eye and you could basically do this on the other side too and have this kind of ghost glowing cat eye thing going on. As I said, I use this often, for example, in my live streams when I create art for my Instagram account, stuff like that. All right. Another thing you can do is to use this as masks. I have prepared here this kind of shape that is a little bit like a bunny head, not the most amazing shape. I'm sure you can do better. You can see here I have my background. I have the picture with the X. So now I put the shape that I created on top of that so it fits into the picture. And I simply right click on my curve and say mask to below. And now I have a nice mask with my curve that gives me the X inside. And I even can make this look more like cut out from the paper by selecting this layer with the pictures of the X, go to effects and then to inner shadow. And you can see here now I have created an inner shadow with the radius and with the offset of that setting for the inner shadow. So 
that is also an effect. So you can see there's a whole big variety of what you can do with shapes other than just vector art. I hope I could help you understand the pen tool in Affinity Photo a little bit better. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and maybe subscribe to my channel. If you do hit the little bell icon and also share this video with your friends if you think this could be helpful.